Our next program is ground driving. Normally I will tie my horse to a solid wall with her height or higher to work with this. So if he does anything stupid when I give him cues that he won't get himself in trouble. Because my wall's in a dark place that the video wouldn't make a good copy, we decided to come out here on the fence. He has been tied before, so I know he's safe. Matter of fact, he's going to teach us a lesson about what happens when a horse gets himself in trouble that's been properly trained to find his release point. I've tied the stirrups down here with a piece of binder twine. I'm going to run my lines through these and hook onto his head. This works on a stock type horse because they are to work with a low headset as they go around a circle. If I was working with an Arab or a saddlebred who works with a high headset, I would put a surcingle on the horse, run the lines through a ring on top of his back so that I encourage a high headset instead of a low one. Also, after I've done a few lessons of the ground driving, I would not tie the stirrups down anymore. I would let them flop about because a horse should be able to uh, be desensitized to uh, stirrups moving against his body and eventually your legs moving against him as well. Then I get behind him and while he's tied to the fence, I bop him with the reins so he knows that there's nothing to be afraid of. He, if he'd step around, no problem, I'd just move with him. He can't get free because he's tied. Then I'm going to move his haunches from side to side, and here he's going to get himself in trouble. Watch his head as I ask him to do this. He got himself in a bind, but a horse that knows how to respond to pressure doesn't go nuts. He finds the release point and stands quiet. Next, we move his haunches off to the side by putting pressure against each leg. This will help us when we get on the circle. If he decides uh, to spin around in a circle, I can catch him with the rein and stop him from getting tied up in a mess and getting away from me. This lesson usually takes about five minutes with most horses. I've spent as long as 10 with a few. I work until he moves softly from either side with the light pressure on the rope. Be prepared to pull with a good bit of force the first time, but then he will get light and you can get him responding lightly on both sides. He's ready to go out to be driven now on the circle. I'm going to on time and tie the lead rope up to his saddle the reason I do this is to keep him from getting his head all the way to the ground. Uh, a horse that can get his head down real low takes away a lot of your control. If you can keep his head reasonably up, you'll at least be able to control him. And in this pen, he'll try to get a bite of grass you'll see later as I turn him loose. Later on, when I drive with a bridle and I drive in a D-ring snaffle, I would also take the reins of the snaffle and tie them up to the saddle for the same reason. Then we go pick up the lines. Here he stepped across to me, so I gotta get him on tangled. I pull him up, get him so I can pick that one up off the saddle from the opposite side when I'm ready. You notice I don't baby him with the lines. As a matter of fact, I like to bop the lines against his body, let him get used to things touching him. We'll get the lines, I'll step around behind him, and we'll march him off into a circle to the left. When we start to drive the horse, we will go to our circle, which we have been doing with a lunge line. Actually, dr ground driving is just lunging with two lines. Of course, that outside line gives a lot of great benefits. First of all, if a horse wants to duck to the inside, that outside rein will catch him and pull his nose back out, so he has to stay out on the circle. Secondly, as the horse goes around a circle, we'd like to have him bent from head to tail in the arc of the circle. And that outside line, because it wraps around his body, tends to help create that arc. Also, we could use that right line to swing up and hit him on the fanny to move him forward if he wanted to be a little sluggish for us. So now we're driving on a circle. Left reins bring his nose to the inside, defining the size of the circle. The outside line trying to create the nice arc. Occasionally people, when you canter a horse on a lunge line, he likes to cross canter. And if you have that problem, a lot of times you can take those horses and put them in driving lines and hold his haunches to the inside where they need to be so that he keeps a true canter and canters correctly. We also teach a horse to stop, to back up lightly, and to turn on the line. All ground driving really is, is uh, like riding with extra long reins and you standing on the ground instead of being in the saddle. We want the horse to stay even between the driving lines, just like when we get on top, we want him to stay even between the bridle reins. Then I'll take this colt and we'll then do some other maneuvers with him on the ground just to gain control so that when I get on top eventually he'll be quiet and not be concerned. I usually like to take him over logs. 
I start with one log and then graduate to four to six. Also, we will weave through cones. As we go through the cone, we practice our halt. Then we'll back him through the cones. You can see the horse is real light and responsive to the, the driving lines. He also moves his hip over as he should. The horse can get real soft and real relaxed and real sensitive to our driving cues, which then, of course, would translate when we get on top and take a hold of the reins, that he'd be also very soft and relaxed there as well.